like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of this land we are calling from today, the Cabrigal of the Dorak Nation. We'd also like to pay respect to the traditional custodians of the lands our guests expert are joining us from. And we would like to pay our respect to the elders past, present and future, and especially pay our respect to any Aboriginal viewers joining us from. Uh, I would like to start by introducing myself. My name is Sam, I'm 20 years old. I just graduated from year 12. And I myself, I'm very interested in nutrition and being healthy in general. Hi everyone, my name is Manoli. I'm 24 years old, I'm from Sri Lanka and I'm a current medical student. Before we go on to our actual questions, I'd like to introduce our two lovely guests, Michaela and Anna. I'd like you both to introduce yourselves, maybe start from Michaela first. Sure, thank you. Um, so my name is Michaela and I'm from Melbourne. Um, so I studied a Bachelor degree of Human Nutrition at La Trobe University. Um, so this course, it was three and a half years um, and I managed to specialise in children's health, women's health, weight management and healthy living. So thank you. Let's go on to Anna. Perfect. My name's Anna. I'm a chef and a personal trainer. I'm actually um, located in Sydney, at working in, at the culinary school. Um, I did three years of study. I also did one year of extra nutrition. 34 years old and a mother of two boys. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Anna. Before we go on to our questions, I'd like to introduce the Health Sport Project. So HealthSpo is for young people. It's a free resource. It's run by the Fairfield City Council. It covers a lot of local information like physical, mental, sexual, and today's topic, which is nutritional health. So for our first question, we're going to balance diet. So our first question, let's go to Michaela. But Anna, you can jump in anytime. So what is a balanced diet? Sure. Um, so a balanced diet means consuming a variety of foods from all five food groups. So your vegetables, your fruits, your grains, um, dairy and protein. Um, and then obviously protein is branched up into lean animal sources or if you're vegetarian or vegan, you've got your nuts and legumes. So, yeah. Okay. And what kind of vitamins and minerals should you have in a diet? Like you mentioned the macronutrients. Right, so um, so if you get your macronutrients and your um, uh, and so vitamins and minerals, you also want to make sure that you are consuming a, you know a good amount of dietary fiber as well and photonutrients as well, which are nutrients that are naturally present in plants. Um, so these are nutrients that help to protect and reduce the risk of diseases such as diabetes, um, heart disease, and then some cancers as well later on in life. Okay, that's very useful information. And that leads us to our second question, which is what, what are some signs of poor nutrition? You mentioned there are some diseases that are associated like very, very, what can you tell us about some signs of poor nutrition? Of course. Um, so there, there's many different signs that you can um, obtain from having, from being undernourished. Um, so you've got feeling fatigue and that usually comes down to having a lack of energy um, from consumption of carbohydrates. Um, you, as well, you've got dry and brittle hair and nails, um, dental problems. So your teeth can become quite weak um, and also the, the sensitivity can increase as well. Um, and that's due to a lack of calcium. Um, then again, you've got your uh, bowel habits. Um, so not increasing enough fiber. Um, that's what I mentioned before. So not having enough fiber in the body can actually slow down the digestive process within the body. Um, and that's when it causes constipation. Um, and then it can also affect your mood um, and cause mental health issues as well. So that, that's to do with having low levels of vitamin B, um, amino acids and omega-3 fatty acids. So these nutrients are precursors to neurotransmitters, which are the brain chemicals that transit um, information from one neuron to another. And then fluids are also very important. Yes. To also stay hydrated, like you said, for blood pressure, heart, you know, disease, kidney, liver. Yes. Is that kind of like a car, right? You need your fluids you know, so that way everything runs well and mm -hmm. same like our human body. It's like an engine. That's right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Absolutely. And for our next question, we've heard sugar, oil and fats are really bad for us. How true is that? 
you want me to answer that or yeah Michaela please yeah okay cool um so very interesting actually so if I start off with sugar um there's actually four types of sugars and they group into two categories so you've got your natural sugars and your added sugars um so your natural sugars are the ones that are found in whole and unprocessed foods um, and then branched off that you've got your fructose um, sugar which is present in your bananas and berries um, and then you've got your lactose, um, which is present in dairy foods such as milk and cheese. So this is pretty much, it's, it's your good sugar. This is what you want to consume. Mm -hmm. um, now, with your added sugar, it's also known as your, your table sugar, um, it's called sucrose. So this one here is considered your bad sugar. Um, and because they don't necessarily come packaged with other good for you nutrients like protein and fiber, our bodies tend to dry, digest them a lot more quickly and can cause a rapid increase in blood glucose. So over time, having consistently high blood glucose, it contributes to problems like obesity. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, diabetes and heart disease. Um, and then if you move on to fat, again, there's different types of fats. So um, if we start off with unsaturated fats, which are your good fats, um, they tend to be found in your fish, um, avocados, and peanuts, um, these fats, um, they help to absorb fat soluble vitamins such as vitamin A, vitamin D, E and K. And they also help to make sure that you feel full. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you move on to your saturated fats, these ones here, they're not bad for you, but they're not the best for you either. So it's kind of that in between. Um, so these fats are found in your meats and other um, animal sources as well, such as butter, cheeses, um, and then commercially fried foods too. Um, and then if we move on to your trans fats, these fats here are found in your margarines, your, your baked goods, it, your, again, your commercially fried foods. So these, three, uh, these fats are your worst fats. This is what you don't want to consume a lot of. Um, this is what can raise your bad cholesterol and also lower your good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add anything, Anna? Uh, she was on to everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michaela. Get so passionate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Michaela, how much is too much of sugars and fat? Um, sure. So the way that I like to look at it is that really you shouldn't have you just shouldn't have to focus on how much of everything. It's what of everything. Mm -hmm. So, like I mentioned before, you got your di the di like different types of sugars, your different type of fats. Some you know are better than others. You want to focus on consuming those that are better for you. Um, than those obviously that are not so good for you. So yeah, I wouldn't focus on too much of um, the amount. It's more what. So all those bad options, like what what is the bad effect on the body of them? Like what can sure. what can it lead to? Um, so like I mentioned before, it it can have effects on your cholesterol levels, um, weight gain, so obesity, um, and then diabetes. Fair enough. You like to add anything, Anna? Yeah, no, that was good too. <laughs> 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 so let's move to that to our next question so i've also heard of people that prefer like they stop eating at eight they do not eat, uh, eat after 8 p uh, 8 p.m they think it's going to store more fat or it's really bad for your body what do you think about that michaela um look the truth is and you can disagree with me but from a um, a science-based um, well, you could say opinion, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, your body does not process foods any differently, whether you consume it at 8 a.m. or if you consume it at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, it really it comes down to the basic math of calories in versus calories out. Mm -hmm. So if you are taking in more, um, if you're using more energy than what you are taking in, then your body gets the rest of its energy from your fat stores. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, it shrinks the level of fat in your body. Um, but... If you're taking in more energy and eating beyond your body's needs, no matter what time of the day, then the opposite is going to happen and mm -hmm. the level of fat stores within the body are going to increase. So no, to answer your question, it's it's not true. Um, it's not going to cause you to store more fat if you eat after 8 p.m. Fair enough. And would you like to talk about calorie in, calorie out? How much should we get calorie in a day? Like how many calories should a person or average person should consume a day to stay in the health range, healthy range? Michaela? Oh, is this me? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, look, it, it really depends on the person. So, um, again, it depends on your age. There's a lot to consider. Um, 
really there's a lot of calculations as well depending on your BMI too um, if you fall within the healthy weight range um, you know if we have to work on getting you into that healthy weight range I, I write a lot of meal plans myself as well so I do a lot of measurements with my clients and mm -hmm. I really dig you know dig deep into the, the amount of fat that's within the body and what foods and what macronutrients are actually required by the body for them to actually you know, be sustained and and to and to fulfill their nutritional needs to make sure that they are operating at an optimal level. It does depend as well if you are an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, for children, you know, even adults, young adults that are, are athletes, they might need more carbohydrates in their diet compared to somebody who isn't as healthy who may need a lot more proteins and stuff because as you burn a lot more. Um, energy, carbohydrates is a thing that you would give to somebody who's an athlete comp compared to a person who doesn't, who isn't as active. Yeah, as active as the other person. Yes. Yeah, fair. yeah Minoli. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. So touching on that topic, we're actually going into food and exercise. So first question uh, any of you can answer. So can more exercise balance out an unhealthy diet? No. <laughs> can you, you like elaborate? to start by you can exercise to the moon and back but it's really what you are what you eat um if you're you know if you're going to go for a run for an hour and you're gonna or even two hours and you're gonna come back and eat two big macs you're not really going to see a change in your bmi yeah um do you agree michaela uh yeah i, I agree and and like you mentioned before as well that metaphor it's it's, it's just like you wouldn't expect your car to run without proper fuel. So if you're not filling your body with the correct amount of food, uh, like energy and carbohydrates, then it's it's not going to work. Um, so, yeah, I agree. So for the next question, for people who go to the gym, does boosting metabolism actually matter for a health point, like from a health perspective, boosting the metabolism? What do you think about that, Mikhail? Um, so... No magic food is going to speed up your metabolism. Um, mm -hmm. So some studies have shown that, um, you know, foods such as like mustard, like you mentioned before, um, green tea and hot chilies. Um, so they temporarily boost your, me your metabolic rates, but the lift isn't very significant. Um, and then this action is actually due to, it's a term called thermogenesis. So this is when your body can convert um, the fat into heat. And so it helps to burn more fat, which can aid in weight loss. Mm -hmm. What about you, Anna? Do you think there's a magic food? Because I've heard that mustard can boost your metabolism by 25%. Yeah, no, I don't agree on that either. You don't agree on any food, like an acidic food that burn? Oh, they do say oh. it is as well, but is it really, when you look at, just say, if you're looking at a bodybuilding side of things, none of, no, there's not one bodybuilder who'll be depleting for weeks on end who add chili into their diet. Compared to ketchup, now tomato sauce with all the added sugars and stuff, which aren't good for you, mm -hmm. um, they would have chili as a natural um, What's that? Okay. Uh, addition to it, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but no, I don't really agree on that. Fair enough. So, Michaela, what food can help you digest food faster or better? Yeah. Um. So you want to consume um a high amount of fiber-rich foods. So this is foods such as your whole grains, leafy vegetables, um, fresh fruits as well. This is what's going to add bulk to your feces um, mm -hmm. and help stimulate that bowel to push food along. So, um, you know, I, I recommend consuming foods again. Brown, uh, so brown rice is great. Green beans. Um, so these foods here are high in insoluble fiber. Um, and insoluble fiber is what attracts water into your stool. Um, so it makes it a lot softer and easier to pass with less strain on your bowel. Um, you know, other foods, um, yogurt and other uh, probiotic foods as well, such as soft cheeses, um, and sourdough bread, mm -hmm. these foods contain live bacteria cultures, um, which promote healthy digestion enhancing bacteria mm -hmm. that live in the intestines. Um, and so they've also been shown to improve the digestion of lactose, which is the sugar that I mentioned before, um, which is present in milk. What about you, Anna? Do you have any? No, I agree with uh, Michaela. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even, um, sorry, and I want to butt in, um, even, even consuming, um, you know, more water. So Anna mentioned it before as well. 
water it, it helps with everything so um you know it's recommended that we drink at least eight glasses of water per day um and in that in that sense it actually helps to keep the feces moist um and therefore and, and therefore and therefore, it's improving the transit time um, of digestion. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, Michaela, what do you think about food supplementations or, and vitamins and minerals? No, oh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this on to you because I, I actually, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't, um, I don't really focus much on supplements. So maybe, mm -hmm. Anna, do you, you're probably more in your field, um, I guess. I want the truth besides omega-3, um, fish oils and stuff like that. Yeah. I never recommend supplements to my clients when they tell me, oh, Anna, you know, what protein shakes? There's not one that I'll give them. I think, you know, to get it from your chicken and your fish um, or natural sources. I'm not a person to send my clients to, you know, the nearest protein supplement store. Yes. And get them mm -hmm. I don't I don't think that's a good way of I'm the same. promoting yeah. healthy. Yeah. Yeah. No. Thank you very much. No. Yes, so we're going on to accessible food part. So it's a big topic. So I'd like both of you to join in and uh, let us know what your input on this is. So in Southwestern Sydney, we have a lot of cultures like Vietnamese, Syrian, Sri Lankan, Pacific Islander. So what makes our food healthy or unhealthy? What do you guys think? Okay. Um, look, the foods from these cultures are mainly considered to be healthy. Um, so they're, they're full of vegetables and um, many of the main meals require a side of grains such as rice. Um, so this offers you great carbohydrate intake, which will fill our bodies with energy um, and provide us with high amounts of fibre, which aids in the process of digestion. I see. Anna, can I have your input on whether there are any other certain spices that we could use that are actually healthy? Turmeric is really, really, really good. Turmeric is really, really good. Um, they, they say that it's really, really good for your stomach. So it prevents um, kidney failure. This is the studies. Michaela, have you heard of that? The turmeric is really good for your liver, kidneys. Yeah. Um, it, it also helps with uh, fighting inflammation as well, which is you know, to do with your, with your stomach. So, yeah. Yeah, turmeric is one that's really, really good. Cumin seeds. You've got, obviously, garlic. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? When it comes to all spices, most spices, if you were to research it, now everybody has, you know, access to internet and Google. There's a lot of things that will come up that it helps prevent a lot of illnesses. Yes. Yeah. And are there any other different ways of cooking food? For example, in my culture, which I'm a Syrian, so we have uh, a meal that called biryani. It has variety of a variety of types of vegetables and it has potatoes, it has ch chicken, but most of the ingredients are fried. So, is there any other way that it can help to do, like to make it healthier or cook it better way, Michaela and Anna? Um, look, it it really does come down to as well what oil you're using. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you're wanting to make you know different alternatives, mm -hmm. uh, the current oil you're, you're you're currently using. Olive oil is great. Um, I mean, otherwise, I know a lot of chefs, I don't know about yourself, Anna, but sometimes if you want to reduce the amount of oil that you're using when cooking in a meal, um, like I know I tell my clients, use um, use chicken or vegetable stock when you're sautéing your vegetables. Um, yeah, it you know, it tastes different, but it's still going to give you that same effect in, in the whole cooking process. So, I mean, you can always make, you know, that little change as well. Um or even, I'm not sure if there's any cream or sauces in that dish, but, you know, always always opting for the lighter version as well. That way you're, like, you're cutting back on your saturated fat levels. Mm -hmm. And Anna? Are you, are you deep frying? Yeah, most of them are deep fried, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so what oils or what alternatives do you think that is for? Olive oil? Yeah, olive oil is really, yeah. really great. Um, a lot of people have been using coconut oil, almond oil, but I just think stay with the old tradition and olive oil, you can't go wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. safest option. You have any experience using an oil called rice bran oil or have you said, uh, what, what is your input on that? Is it healthier than olive oil or do you recommend just using oils that are preferable for that particular? 
They recommend that it's, they do say, the studies do show that it's a lot lighter and a lot um, a healthier option. But the thing is, throughout all these oils and the studies throughout the years, everything always ends up going back to olive oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why I just choose to stick. And if somebody asks me for my, um, like a recommendation, I always say stay to olive oil. Olive oil. Yeah. Fair enough. Amazing. And it always falls back on. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, like, especially at this, time they're considering considering going vegan or vegetarian so what are some options that are actually accessible for them and good for them because like if you become vegan and, veg and uh, vegetarian you're going to cut most of the animal products like most of the proteins that you get and uh, how do you recommend to get them and then in, in, from vegan diet uh, michaela um so again making substitutions so, I mean, you've got you've got tofu, which is great for protein, so it's a great protein source. Um, your legumes, nuts and seeds are great as well. Um, mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's for an average person. What about an athlete that requires more protein as they burn and more energy and more stuff to function properly and to recover from a session, a gym session? What do you think? Like, because they will need to double their food what food is like the most accessible for them as because like food get really expensive vegan food tend to get to get really expensive and organic food tend to get really expensive so what cheap options do you think there are michaela um so, so like we mentioned before those those ingredients they do tend to be at um a more affordable price range mm -hmm. um so if anything you know even if you have say nut butters um, on a whole meal slice of bread, you're getting carbohydrate intake, mm -hmm. you're getting protein intake, um, and then even you know, your banana as well that adds to more carbohydrates for that athlete because they're going to they're gonna need that energy to fuel their body. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What about you, Anna? Any yeah, comments? Egg, rice. Yeah. Um, a lot of people I've noticed that are vegetarians, they like to have boiled rice, cook boiled rice and put it on into the fry pan once boiled mm -hmm. and then break um, eggs and a few egg whites and then cook it through. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really nice, you know, mm -hmm. high carbohydrate but protein diet mm -hmm. healthy option. There's a lot of a lot of foods out, especially this day and age, because not that it's, you know, you wouldn't call it a trend, but it's something that a lot of people are going for, going vegan. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there is a lot of things that people are actually doing. And there's so many foods out there that they're incorporating within one another mm -hmm. that they, they can make a healthy meal out of. Leading on to that question, there's a big stereotype around healthy or vegan food being expensive. What are your thoughts on that? Well, to buy a packet of chips, um, sweet chili chips from Woolworths, <laughs> is <laughs> You know, if you walk in the aisle, it's two dollars fifty, right? But then if you think as a, you know, oh no, we're not going to eat, well, not chips, but you now if you wanted to go for a sweet potato, it's four dollars for a for a bag, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's where the stereotype comes into play. But even when it comes to meat, meat's really you can get cheap meat, or you could get now tofu. How much is tofu? And then plus, if you add ginger. You know, but it all depends on moderation and how much you buy and eat. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for people who live with the stereotype. Yeah. So for people who live on Centrelink, for example, what kind of options do you recommend or do you think might be useful for them to try? Um, look, my top tips would be you don't always have to shop fresh. Um, mm -hmm. Go into the frozen aisles. It's sometimes actually tends to be a lot cheaper than purchasing fresh food items. Um, I mean, as well, shopping in bulk, um, this can also work out cheaper in the long run. So if you actually have a look at items when you go shopping, the larger package will always be cheaper by weight. Um, mm -hmm. So especially when it comes to buying nuts, seeds, flowers, yeah. um, grains, spices, herbs, it always works a lot cheaper to buy in bulk. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, Buy generic brand items, you know, your Coles and Woolies home brand, they're, they're just as good and they're still going to offer you the same nutrition um, that you require as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And that will be our last question on our tips to be vegan on a budget. <laughs> Thank you very much to our guests for joining us today. 
Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Sean, save us. <laughs> <laughs>